All right, fire noise, skull fire in background. Noise. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Do? Ooh, well Jeremy, done, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy is out, so we uh, have to improvise with the little graphics on the front. What is going on, everybody? Hello, hello. Welcome to the STS, guys, the weekly podcast where we sit around, shoot the shit, and talk about everything geeky, nerdy, and cool. Tonight, I am the one in charge. I am the captain now. I am Scott. Hey, hey, it's Larry. Hey, guys, it's Nate. And welcome to the show. Uh, I, to start with, though, I do have to apologize to everybody watching right now for the weird, fucked up nature of my webcam. I don't know why it's decided that everything in my house needs to be a very weird shade of orange, but it is. So <laughs> we're going to have to deal with it. I tried to fix it, and I cannot. It's okay. It doesn't look too bad. You still look beautiful. Wait, we didn't even announce what episode this is. It's episode oh, yeah. 91, right, guys? It is 91. episode 91. 91. What is that? 80 episodes since the last time we talked Stranger Things? If I carry the two and I double half it, that's nine away yeah. from 100. We are getting close to that big 100, baby. That is awesome. So, Would you say it's been a week? It, it's always been a week, man. This it's is like been, one of my uh, favorite weeks. It's been an Independence Day type of week. Yes. It has. It, it's always great when you can legally blow shit up like as a, for, <laughs> for a week and no one really says anything. Like my neighbor's a cop and he was blowing shit up with <laughs> me. Like it is amazing. Yeah, yeah somebody will definitely go ham. Somebody, uh, somebody on our community Facebook group uh, oh. the next morning posted like hey thanks to whoever called the cops on me last night for throwing for blowing up fireworks the cop came out and hung out with me and lit off fireworks with us so nice i don't know you can't get anywhere yeah i actually see that uh batman figs in the chat shout out to tyler and i saw on his story that his neighbors were lighting off some illegal fireworks last oh, night yeah. that were uh really loud squealing ones yeah like That's the great. big like the big main show ones right one after another yeah they, they were doing it right yeah I think yeah. one of my neighbors might have had that too. It was definitely crazy. Yeah. My dog was not enjoying that at all. Yeah, this is our new neighborhood. It was a little bit louder than the older neighborhood. And I don't like, we live on the end. Like, I don't know where these people went. I think they went to the main street, like it's right by us, but it sounded like it's right outside the door. We were trying to watch TV. Yeah, how no. dare they? So, no. so I, I got a good story for you guys if you want. Do you want to hear about how I almost burnt down my house this year? I want to hear your it's been a week, Scott. <laughs> this has been a week, yeah. So this is so I'm gonna I'm giving out to the, the public here the, the big fuck up that I did over the weekend. So a, as is tradition, I lit off some fireworks and my daughter wanted this one that was this unicorn one. This this big ass brick that's a big fountain, right? So I light it off and that thing is still smoking. And because there's like it's fireworks, right? They're hot. I'm not throwing them immediately into my garbage can. So I kind of just pile them up in the box that the, the set that I bought came in. And I put that little, that little bastard on top and it was still so, sort of smoking. And then I went in to go do the dishes and I just left it kind of on the side of my house. And about five minutes later, a guy rang my doorbell and he's like, you know, there's a big ass fire on the side of your house, right? Oh my God. <laughs> uh Oh, <laughs> so I ran out. Turn the corner, and sure enough, like my dumbass put a firework on top of a box of other, like, highly flammable things. Like, they're all other fireworks in cardboard boxes. When one relit itself on fire, it set them all back on fire. <laughs> Luckily, I had a hose right by and was able to, like, spray that shit down. But it was a good, like, three foot flames coming off the, like, the ground right by my house. I was like, ah, I did not put that far enough away from any anything that was flammable. That's oh probably God. such a relatable 4th of July story. Alcohol was cans? involved. I did yeah. that. Yeah. How many trash cans lit on fire? I can it's say at least fire. one other person in my neighborhood had the same issue because there was a melted trash can in the front of somebody's house. So somebody did throw some shit in their garbage and it caught on fire and melted their garbage can. So I'm not the only one, at least in my area. I'm not, I'm not number one. That is great. So happy 4th of July to everybody. Yeah. Don't burn Sorry your house down. Burnt. <laughs> yeah. Don't burn your house down, please. If you have remaining fireworks. 
I got oh my God, Scott. That is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I I was like the fact that somebody like was walking their dog and just like rung my doorbell. It wasn't like, hey, there's like a fire. Like I better put it out. He's like, uh, do you know there's a fire on the side of your house? Right. Like, do you do you like, want this do, fire here? Like, yeah, do you want that there? Was that supposed to be like dude fucking put it out? Yeah. <laughs> like at least move it from my house. I have a big rock yard. Like, move that shit. I've been watching then go fire find for a me. while and now it's on the side of your house. Yeah, like your house is burning. I don't know if you knew. Like what yes i'm like no i didn't know my house is on fire like fix that shit so oh. that was my my wonderful story for fourth of july how how scott almost burnt down his house that's a classic it's been a week yeah classic scott that is a classic yeah, scott right not only well, did i light spent, off fireworks i spent my fourth of july watching stranger things season three. Ooh. Did and you? what a start it is. Man, they timed that perfectly, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was, uh, yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. Like, really, that was Fourth of July being on a Thursday, right? Holiday, you're off work. It was the perfect day to drop an eight episode TV show that you know everyone's going to basically just sit down and watch anyhow. Oh, but like, binge the shit out of Yeah, it. exactly, right? It was the perfect day to do that. So, well done, Netflix. Well done, Stranger Things crew. Like, Whoever made that decision was super smart because as soon as I saw that release date, like I knew how I was spending my Independence Day. Yeah. Well, yes, and, and let's let's give credit for them kind of lining the show with the holiday that it's set in, right? Yeah, that's perfect. The first two yeah. were right around the Halloween time, mm -hmm. and they came out right around that time. And now this one being set in Fourth of July, they dropped it on Fourth of July. Yeah, like, very. It, cool. It's good for them that it keeps you kind of. The sentiment of that holiday didn't get lost over the time. So we're all still thinking like, oh, like the 4th of July carnivals yeah. and like the fireworks yeah. and all that shit. Yeah, you can't drop a Christmas right, episode <laughs> theme like in July. It's got to be summer. It's got to be 4th of July. No school. Hanging yeah. out at the mall. Like it was it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. Christmas Eat, eating July ice cream. People off. But Some yeah, no, scoops. I totally agree with you guys. Um, it gets you in the mood to watch the show, too, because like you said, Start of a long weekend. It's Fourth of July. I just watched some fireworks. Now let's get into some yeah. Stranger Things and binge watch. And that's what I've been doing. You know it's what else? Great. You know what else I've been doing? I've been thinking a lot about our super mega Stranger Things prize pack giveaway. Wait, did did you just say super mega Stranger Things prize pack giveaway? He did just say Super Mega Stranger Things prize pack giveaway. <laughs> I did say Super Mega Stranger Things prize pack giveaway. If you're uh, not aware, we've yeah. got another Super Mega giveaway going on. And uh, wait, so Larry, yes, what sir. is the theme of this thing? Like it's mm. Stranger <laughs> Things, but what do we have in said said uh, said giveaway? Like what can you win? So whoever wins our Super Mega Stranger Things prize pack giveaway is going to get five, five, five. Funko Pops. They're going to get a sixth Funko Pop that is signed by Gaden Mazzaro, the guy who plays Dustin. And I happen to have it right here. You're going to get this signed 8x10 of 11 Millie Bobby Brown herself. Uh, it's pretty awesome. So that's two autographs, six total pops, and we've got a few other random things that were thrown in this price back too. Dang. That so is super you, mega. So if you haven't entered already, uh, you can go to stsguys.fun. Uh, the link's up on our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's it's everywhere, right? Uh, you go to stsguys.fun, uh, complete a few actions, like check out our Instagram or Facebook, or vote for us for the People's Choice Podcast Awards. Ooh. And <laughs> you, can, you can get yourself some entries to win this awesome prize pack. Uh, we're going to be passing out flyers in San Diego uh, during San Diego Comic-Con 2. That's how you're going to earn those 50 bonus entries. So if you're going to be in San Diego uh, coming up here really soon, right? Less than two weeks. Uh, look for us and you'll earn yourself a bunch of bonus entries with that secret code on that Comic-Con flyer. Yeah, lots of ways to get entries. Daily entries are available. Uh, don't miss your chance yeah. because there are a lot of ways to win here. And that's an awesome, super mega prize pack. And... and, and not to kind of beat around the uh, or to beat a dead horse, I guess, at this point. But the thing that has won for almost everybody is the people doing those uh, 
the daily ones have been what has won for most everybody in our last couple of giveaways. So yeah, that's it, true. Cause yeah. right when you click pick winner on these, on these uh, giveaway sites, it shows you what action completed uh, was the uh, winning action. So yeah, like Scott said, it's usually a daily entry. So yeah, don't forget about those daily entries. I think all our daily entries are either vote for us for the podcast awards or uh, YouTube related, right? Just like watch and share a video. So super easy. Take just you know a couple minutes every day. You can earn those bonus entries. Get your name to the top of that list for the people who've been entering because uh, you got to get the most entries, man. Like how else are you going to win this super mega Stranger Things prize pack giveaway? Definitely. And like Larry said, we're going to be at San Diego Comic Con coming up soon. Only two weeks away. You can get that secret code from the flyer. It gives you plus fifty points in the giveaway. And then also, uh, which we announced last week, we're going to have an exclusive STS guys pin that you can only get at San Diego Comic-Con. If you see us in person, you'll not only get a pin, the secret code from the flyer, you'll get some pogs, maybe some stickers. I mean, you're gonna get all this <laughs> STS guy sway. You're gonna be feeling great walking around San Diego. You're gonna have whatever we have on hand. So I got, I still got some pogs. I'm holding out to try to find somebody with, uh, uh, to make me a slammer, right? Ooh, someone yeah, that we, gotta, we gotta figure someone that out. Someone that can do some etching. How about this super rare, brand new STS guys refrigerator Ooh. magnet? Oh, dang! The hits just keep coming. But you guys didn't even know I made, so I, I think it turned not, out pretty well. But now I want. Yeah, you have one. Don't worry. Shout out! To, shout out to Sticker Mule for super awesome products, man. I, I do. Awesome. I, I can I say I really like in the uh, the white skull in that one. Yeah, it turned out it turned out really good. So we have a limited number of those, um, but yeah, I'll bring I'm custom the extras out to these guys, and we'll bring the remaining ones to Comic Con. Right. right, and we'll have them out. We'll be handing them out. I really want to go home and not have a lot of swag left over after this right. one, so we'll be handing it out to a lot of people. Like I'm wanna... literally, I'm literally going to stand on the in the corner under that gas lamp sign and hand out those flyers because I don't like Scott said I don't want to just throw them in the trash and I don't want to bring the stuff home. So yeah. whatever's yeah. left, like at the end of the day, like Saturday or Sunday, uh, I'm just going to be passing stuff out under the gas lamp sign. I think yeah. I'm just going to go second, second story of something that I can and just kind of <laughs> throw it. Yeah. Just oh, and then, and then run off. before security finds me. Make it rain. There's, so. there's a, there's a people bridge like yeah. between Petco park and like the Hilton. Uh, you could totally do that, but like yeah. it would be in the way of traffic. Uh, it, um, it, you could probably the escalators, <laughs> that take you up to the second floor of the convention that's center. That's what I'm wondering you if can, I can. You yeah. probably get kicked out for making it rain bright green STS guys flyers, but you know what? As long as they don't know you're from the STS guys. Oh wait, those flyers say <laughs> STS guys. Um, they don't know I'm a okay. part of it. They think no, no, maybe no, no. I just we'll, got. We'll just yeah. blame somebody else. Yeah, we like, we gave those to somebody to hand out. Like, yeah, yeah, that might not be such a good idea. Littering. Oh, I wonder who did it. Exactly. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Those guys. Yeah. Pretty good way to get in touch with these guys. Anyways, and... what we're trying to say, we want to give you free shit. So just find us at San Diego Comic Con and, we'll and then we'll some free further stuff. your chances of getting that awesome Super Mega Stranger Things prize pack giveaway. Six total pops, two autographs, one of Millie Bobby Brown. It's an awesome giveaway. Don't miss the chance. Cool. And thank you to everybody who's entered already. Uh, there's some people in the chat. I think I recognize all these names, but if there's anybody new hanging out, uh, actually there's one, right? Amy Wigglesworth. Welcome to the stream. Uh, thank love you, the, anybody. Love the name. Wigglesworth. Thank you. Like we got a ton of new follower, followers and stuff on Twitter. So if anybody new is watching this, uh, thank you guys Welcome. for hanging out. Uh, I, we promise we'll actually start talking about regular shit here soon. <laughs> <laughs> we got to show the hell out of this giveaway. Yeah. Because it's awesome. We don't want you guys to miss your chance. 2,000 total entries already, though. Yeah. So you want to get those daily climbing. entries and start racking up your chances. Anyways, so let's go into Stranger Things, right, guys? Stranger Things Season 3, baby. Spoiler alert? Yes. Um, Spoiler alert. Yeah, that, let's just go. If you haven't seen it, as much as I don't want to push people away, uh, there's a lot of shit that happens in the last couple episodes that we have to talk about. Yeah. So we are going to be talking about those last last few. So, so if you haven't finished it, uh, you might want to pause and come back after uh, <laughs> you finished it. Take Would a day because it should only if if you're a true like nerd or true fan, it should only like by today 
you've had enough time. You, but yeah. yeah. Well, except for Nate from the STS guys, who's only through episode six. Yeah. So, so unless my, you're my, Nate. My, my apologies first off go out to you, Nate, because exactly. these last few episodes, you're going to be like, oh, I know what happens. <laughs> I was going on a mad dash trying to get it finished, but I still have two. I feel like I'm far enough in where I'm not going to get too mad about any major spoilers, but yeah, no, you'll be fine. So how should we start this off? Do we want to give our ratings at first or should we talk about our own personal thoughts? Why don't, why don't we do, why don't we do rating with like favorite moments? All right. You want to start us off? Okay. Uh, You go. So um, I gotta be honest. I wasn't like, crazy excited for season uh stranger things season three i liked one and two uh i just i don't know i just had didn't have the hype yet but i gotta say after i started watching the show um it is really good they've definitely hit their stride with the quality of the show the actors do a really good job they really nail that 80s vibe which really gets me into the show it makes me want to keep watching it over and over again or you know the next episode what are they going to show next what reference am i going to recognize and uh, like I said, they start building this pretty awesome story um, in season three and just hitting it all strides. I've really been enjoying it. I got to say, it might be my favorite season so far, um, maybe because of the development of the characters. And I feel like each character gets a lot of really good screen time and its own good you know, story. Overall, I'm really enjoying the show. Um, so two thumbs way up so far. What do you think, Larry? Um, no, I totally agree. I think you kind of nailed it, right? Like, I, I think it's like one of the main draws for like season one of Stranger Things was like, everybody's like, hey, this is cool. It feels like an 80s show. Um, but from there, they kind of just have grown the references like in season two, right? Like the, the Ghostbusters Halloween costumes. Uh, and then from there, they just grew it even more into, into season three. So it's really cool. I think you can definitely see the progression of uh, kind of their storytelling and how they've kind of interweaved uh, like the character relationships and all, you know, in, in the actual story, just kind of around the eighties and that feeling of that vibe and how they can throw like a back to the future poster up in the background. And it's just like little stuff like that. It's like, right. Oh man, that's just so cool. Um, for, for me, like favorite moment uh, is really, uh, I'm going to say it's the friendship that developed between 11 and Max like that whole thing was cool. Like when they go shopping at the mall and yes. like 11 picks out all of her clothes and all that stuff. Uh, that was really cool and really fun. It was nice to see like them get along too. Um, Cause like, I think season two, it kind of looked like they're going to be enemies and like not get along kind of clash, but uh, that got torn away. Right. They bond over uh, boys being jerks. Which I feel like boys. It's very, very tween girl thing. Anyhow. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so well, I think, they do that that girl power trope. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Larry. No, but they do it in like a good way. You know, like yeah. make your own choices. Think for yourself. Be your own person. Yeah, I think that's not... a cool way and it's not shoving it down your throat. Exactly. Well, it's not like, forced. Like her whole thing of like, you just got to find something that's you. You know, not like, not what anybody else thinks you yeah. should wear or whatever. Like well, find she... the thing that, that speaks to you. She I always dressed really... super plain. Uh, she was more like Hopper's now. old clothes. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. flannels and just kind of muted stuff and sweatpants. I, I don't know, but like, yeah, or like Mike's old clothes in season one. Uh, it was good to see her have some style and just kind of come out like and develop as a character. Um, and it's so fun too because like they were little kids when this thing started, but right, they're they're growing up as the story grows, and it's it's been really cool. But yeah, Max and uh, Max and Eleven are my favorite. Uh, Tyler, Batman, T.S. Figs brings up Robin and Steve. Uh, that whole duo was a close second, man. That, yeah, was, that was fun, too. That is such a cool like character relationship. Because at first, you don't really think of anything of it. And then you start seeing how long they're hanging out. And she helps yeah. crack the code. And she gets really involved into oh, it. Yeah, super, super fast, too, right? She, yeah. All of a sudden, I thought she was going to kind of be a side character. Um, but no, she's she's with, uh, like, with all, Dustin all the whole way. Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. I, I do have to say, like, her addition never felt out of place. Like as to, to be a new, uh, like a new addition immediately yeah. was like, okay, I see why that like this person fits and th- there's like a reason why they're there. No, they, they do a good job with that too. Like who the other, the other kind of main character is what uh, Lucas's little sister, Erica, like she kind of jumps in yeah. too and just kind of fits. Yeah. Um, and then the characters we saw introduced in season two, like Billy and, uh, Max, 
I, I feel like they, they kind of uh, they just really started to meld well too with with, with the, this you know it's a really big ensemble cast, but I really feel like they kind of found their place this season too, which is cool. Yeah, I totally agree. There's not really one character I can think of that I'm like, gosh, that character's annoying. You know, they all no. kind of serve yeah. their purpose and they're all fun to watch in their own way. Yeah, and they're all likable, like you said. Like, there's nobody who I, I don't like. Like, Joyce, Hopper. I'm just trying to think. All the kids are fine. Maybe Will. Yeah. <laughs> Will's a Will, little iffy, I, I, but I feel, that's I, for I, a reason. So, so I'll, I'll go through with my thing. But yeah, Will, like, I guess he only is there to be an early warning system. Like, I guess he's like their, he's yeah. their, uh, LIDAR for, uh, well, that uh, an angsty, for, angsty tween who doesn't like girls. Play, he yeah. just wants to play D and D. Like, feel, of course, he doesn't like girls cause he just wants to play D and D. Like, I'm sorry. I've known a lot of kids that are like that. Well, I think he's like that kind of like that PTSD kid, you know, he's had yeah. the worst of it both seasons. And now he just wants to be a normal kid and go back to it. But so much time has passed that he almost can't come to terms with it and he loses his, you know, shit when his friends don't want to play D and D and it's just like, he's suffered probably the most. And I think yeah. he's having a hard time going back to normal life. Yeah. He's been through a lot since we met him, right? Like he was in the upside down the first season, second season. Like he had, he that, was the bad guy. Yeah. He had the thing take over. I'm like the poor kid's been through a lot, man. Like he yeah. just wants, you said he just wants to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Just yeah. put just on his wizard some, costume. Play some fucking D and D with the kid. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> like it, It's funny. You, though. Owe it, you owe it to his ass to play yeah. some D and D. Sometimes uh, like doing that super nerdy thing that you're so passionate about. I can speak to, you know, I, I pose action figures and take photos of them, but it's like a kind of, a therapy for me. So I, I feel like that's how they're showing the D and D thing. Like it's almost like therapy for Will, just to let me play. Let me nerd out about it. Let me not focus about all the strangers things, bullshit in the demo gardens, you know? Do you think that 2019 will Dustin Lucas and Mike, instead of playing D and D, do you think they'd have a podcast? They would definitely have a <laughs> podcast. I, yeah. I think if we got to see them grow up into older men, they would probably start yeah. a podcast. I think so too, for sure. So, so let, let me go into this. I, I actually have a couple of, I have a favorite, like a favorite scene and a couple of honorable mentions that I need to bring up. Right. What do you got? So, all right. So I give I, rating wise, two thumbs up for me. Uh, right. I think this is probably my favorite of the, the seasons Ooh. so far. Uh, one was good to set a lot of things up for this season, but um, two great scenes. Uh, Billy, when he first gets possessed, getting dragged across through like the the building, very like eighties horror movie, like Nightmare on Elm Street kind of vibes to it. With him just, you know, you don't see what's dragging him, but he's dragging across the floor. I love that scene. Um, the scene where uh, uh, Steve beats the shit out of the Russian guy inside the thing. He like he finally wins a fight. Like uh, uh. Somebody had brought that up in the chat too. Uh, so yeah, Funko's with Chris had brought up that, that Steve finally winning a fight when Dustin shocks the shit out of the doctor with that fucking taser oh, thing, yeah. the yeah. cattle prod. And he just like that little guttural scream that he gives as he zaps the shit out of the guy was probably like, it made me laugh. Um, but best scene, best scene forever was watching Hopper throw the fucking Russian like Terminator into the machine at the end. Yes. Like when he finally kills the kills the Russian dude at the end and he just fucking he's <laughs> tosses him into the little little machine. Um that Russian dude is such a cool Terminator reference. You know, it they is. use that so it is. well. Yeah. Um, so so when he finally bites it and like Hopper kills him, like it is the most badass scene uh yeah. in that whole thing. Cause you're like you've they have those little teaser fights, right? Like they keep having uh yeah, little he hints and like he ambushes them a couple the of old, times. Yeah, at that old facility. Yeah, yeah, right. You're still trying to figure out who he is at some points, um, but yeah, like the payoff is pretty good. Well, yeah, plus the very little, end. like the way he walks around. You know, he's stomping his feet all the time. The he's guy just very like doesn't yeah. stop. You know, he's always finding the kids. His oh, shoulders are yeah. always very square. Yeah, yeah. Like Nick, I think we kind of touched on it, but Nicola in the chat asked, "Did anyone get Terminator vibes from the Russian yeah. guy?" And yeah, de definitely. Um, like Scott and I talked briefly about this on Friday. That was one of the first things we said. Like that guy's supposed to be like the Terminator, right? 
like uh there's that one scene when they're at the convenience store like that and the dude like walks up to the counter like he just kind of feels like he's turning he even looks a little bit like arnold schwarzenegger yeah, he, yeah he's got a decent enough look and even though he's russian he somehow kind of sounds german when you talk like <laughs> for whatever reason he kind of you're like what is he russian or is he like a german dude working for the russian like yeah, who knows? yeah same haircut and everything like yeah. the fact that they <laughs> yeah. brought in like a terminator for this was amazing and to see hopper go have like a good antagonist basically made for him was was really yeah. cool i think hopper goes through an interesting arc in this at first you know i wasn't sure if i liked this hopper i'm like eh, i don't know they changed hopper a lot but it's almost like he's kind of going through his own, I don't know, depression type thing about everything that's happening. And then he kind of gets his stride back, but I feel like I didn't really know what kind of hopper we were going to get in the beginning of the show. Did you guys get that vibe? or I, I kind of thought they were they going down the route because, I mean, he drinks a lot. Yeah. Was, first couple like of those, like, yeah. I was like, oh, no. Uh He's going to go like they're going to go the alcoholic route with him and he's going to have like some issue. But they didn't. Um, yeah, and then, um, yeah. it seems like yeah. later on they kind of set up that Joyce sort of brings him out of that, you know, like gives him a reason to fight and to help Joyce and help the kids again. So I, one of the scenes, uh, we have in the, um, in the chat here, they talk about where Hopper fucking lights up the Russian in the fun house. I, where he oh, yeah. that takes the awesome. gun and he just basically puts a clip into the yeah. guy's chest yeah. and then he yeah. stands back up. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and he takes off the bulletproof vest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like that was one of the things that I was, I love the fact that he like took all those rounds and then just stands back up and you're like, <laughs> it's the fucking Terminator. Like I love the Russian guy. I, I want like, a diehard three, like <laughs> in season four, I want the Russians brother to show up to be Ooh. like, get some revenge. So we also have, so we, so we have a new Russian bad guy. Right. Or like a clone of that guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always go back to clones yeah. um, or maybe a more advanced version of that guy. Yeah. That's what I want. Like, I want like, yeah. I want like, like, said, like, yeah. like, yeah, like the an metal. actual Terminator. Yeah. Like, or maybe like half machine, half Demogorgon. Actually, who's the guy? What's the guy's name that played the T one thousand? I'm pretty sure he hasn't been working a whole bunch. He might come in and he might just come in and reprise his role. That would be amazing. Or yeah, Seems John like Claude Van Damme says Tops oh. fan. Yeah. Oh well, they always bring in a great new like '80s movie icon. Yeah. You know, each season they've done it. You know, last time it was Paul Reiser, right? Yeah. From pulling <laughs> the the Alien. From Alien, right? Like they they kind of flipped. His character to the other direction. Um, and, this uh, year, Sean Austin too was a good. Yeah, one. Sean Austin oh, yeah. comes in. This this year we got uh, Carrie Ellis. Uh, so anybody who loves their their good old Princess Bride can have uh, oh, yeah. the or uh, was it Days of Thunder? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that movie. Tom Cruise classic. Tom Cruise classic. They can't get Cruise. They can't get Cruise. But they can get his, uh, yeah. they can get his uh, teammate from the the show. So, uh, yeah. So th I mean, they always bring in those those eighty stars that you really haven't seen a whole lot of lately, which mm -hmm. is also amazing. Yeah, it really adds to the vibe of the show. Like I was saying before, like that's one thing they just nail so well, and I enjoy it. You guys talked about it earlier. I'll say one of my favorite scenes was that first mall scene because it gave me that nostalgic feel. Like, oh, man, I remember going back in the mall and walking yes. with my friends and meeting up with friends and seeing other friends that I didn't know were going to be there. And yeah. then you go and see movies. and yep. The Sam uh, Goody. Yeah. Yes. The Sam so Goody. School of Burger King. Yeah. So, so we, bring, they, we bring up another one. They say Jake Busey. I forgot. Yeah, Jake Busey coming in. You know, yeah, Jake was more of the 90s. But because his dad is like a fucking batshit crazy person, they probably were like, eh, people will think it's Gary like <laughs> when he yeah. comes in the show. He looks enough like his dad now that, that he's like a Gary Busey stand in. He's like a sane Gary Busey. <laughs> if I could sing right now, I would sing to you the lyrics to the never ending story. So, <laughs> okay. I, I actually have a complaint about that. That was my one kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Um, so that took how long? 
right? A like, long how long time. do you think, like, they, that they they spent like singing that goddamn song? <laughs> five five good minutes, maybe. Five good minutes, right? Yeah. Now, just going through based on storyline, the Russian dude shows up at the end, yeah. right as they're trying to like pull the keys or whatever, right, and stop all the bad dudes. His last confrontation happens at that one. Had that five minutes not had to take place of them singing the goddamn never ending story song. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Hopper would still be around after this series. Like, Ooh. fuck that kid. Like, you curly hurt little shit. Like, you're the reason I Hopper's potentially dead slash in a Russian prison. Well, hold on. Was it Dustin's fault or was it Susie's fault? Susie. Okay. Well, Susie, but Dustin was like, come okay, on, Susie Poo. Like, yeah. yeah, come on, Susie Poo. Like, I would, if I was him, I'd be like, shut the fuck up. There's <laughs> real shit going on. I will sing to you later. <laughs> Give me the goddamn planks constant. Uh, yeah yeah <laughs> batman the animated series fan hashtag Susie killed hopper yeah she fucking yeah. did Susie, Ugh. eat a dick like oh. my like one dead. of my favorite characters is dead because of your dumb ass dang but is he dead okay so that's my wonder is because like obviously the last we'll say the end credit scene right yeah it was kind of an after credit scene that's, after credit scene yeah. that they show there's this Russian prison, and they say not the American. Yeah. Is that Hopper? I think that's the first thought. Like, I think right. that's what it's made to make you question it. Yeah, like, it, but like, Hopper. I mean, the fact of the matter is, he was in a room, and everyone else in the room got fucking vaporized. Like, uh, yeah, right. We don't see anything happen. Dust. You don't but see you anything do happen to Hopper, but you see the Russians get vaporized. Right. You see the Russians get vaporized. You don't see Hopper, but. Like it's kind of implied that he he bit the big one. See, I wonder if the dude in that prison is the doctor. What is it, uh, Doctor Dresden or whatever? The do- dude from the first, Doctor Brenner, oh, the guy yeah, from the Brenner. first one, the white haired guy, the white haired guy. Papa. I wonder if he didn't get killed by the Demogorgon in the first one, and Maybe. that he's in some Russian prison. Yeah, um, that would be interesting, and he knows all about that stuff, so they would want to have him. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it's Barb. <laughs> Maybe yeah, they went Barb. into their upside down or whatever, and they found Barb. Dude, yeah, but the Dang, problem Barb is Barb justice back. for Barb, Scott. Justice Ooh. for Barb. But the the problem is, you actually in the show, unless you show the body, they're not dead, right? Oh yeah, they showed the fucking body with Barb. Like you saw her <laughs> her corpse. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I'm gonna say Taps fan, right? Like I, I'm sorry if I, I said it said it wrong here. Um, brings up the fact that. The gate was open at the time. So what if Hopper ran and jumped into the gate before the thing ignited and killed everybody? He's just now stuck in the upside down. Uh, Yeah. And then the Russians can get him out because they've clearly opened up the gate somehow. Right. So he just, yeah. Yeah, So just waiting to feed him to the Demogorgon. Right. But no, not the American. (laughs) Uh, so, So my guess is that at the very end, Hopper, he jumped into the gate. Right, he he enters the upside down, and season four is going to be somehow Hopper lets everyone know that he's still alive, he's still there, and they have to get Hopper out of the upside down. Maybe a mouse lets him out, like it hits yeah. a button or something. Hits a button, hits a button on a, a machine. <laughs> then he comes uh, out. But I, you know, what's his name? Uh, Paul Reiser. I don't know his actual character, his name in it. I'm just going to say Paul Reiser because everyone knows who that is. Um, <laughs> mad about you uh yes. you know he uh shows up at the end and looks kind of like really upset about the fact that there's the gate's been opened again yeah so i really think that he'll come back again trying to figure out a way because it didn't look like it was fully 100 percent closed right it was still kind of glowing so there's that still option of like oh shit like maybe there's a, a way to open it up again yeah well and how did the russians get that demogorgon does that well, I mean, mean they sh- opened up the gate or yeah well because i mean that showed them opening their gate on in russia yeah but they were having a hard time with it and then he's like well we went to a place where it was already open before and it made it way easier like alexi was an awesome character i actually really liked alexi the russian scientist who built the machine right but yeah who loves slurpees who loves like everything america and yeah woody woodpecker I thought it was an interesting. I was like, "What are they going to do with this Russian random Russian dude now?" Yeah, and then he actually fits a really good 
point in the story where you learn all about like what they've been doing yeah. and there's some fun banter. I agree. Alexi was a good episode. Yeah. The whole, the whole thing with him, I, you know, you only have what a real one episode of actually interacting with him <laughs> in, in, in terms of like, as an episode, the rest of it, he's kind of like a, a prisoner. He can't really, he's speaking in Russian, but you know, there's no tran like translator. Within that episode, when he gets shot at the end, I actually felt really bad for him. Did you like, cry a little bit? I, a little bit. <laughs> like, I really felt bad for Alexi. Because I was like, dude, like, I, they did so well, like, building his character and kind of his whole thing. You know, him kind of walking him through what the machine does, how to turn it off. Like, going there with them to be like, yeah, all right, well, I'll, like... I'm with you. Like we'll, we'll shut it down. Like I actually got to like that character and yeah, his was, interactions with Murray. Like I really enjoyed. I know he was um, all right. I mean, like right. The first episode he watched his friend get choked to death. Yeah. Like at first I'm like, Oh, he's a bad guy. Like, what is he going to do? And then I'll right. Like all of a sudden he kind of flips because he realized I love America. Well, he's like, I love America. I love America. And no matter what I do, these guys are going to kill me when I show yeah. back up. So I might as well like. <laughs> so the, the <laughs> chat's talking about the cherry Slurpee. Do they even make strawberry Slurpees? Yeah, I was like, wait, I thought they were going to say they got a blueberry or something. That's that all I That would have been better. Yeah. Blueberry or cherry, but not a strawberry. I'm trying no. to go back to, to no, the, the mid 80s here. And, Maybe they're still they, testing out things, right? They had the new Coke for God's sake. Like, yeah, what about they, like a Coca Cola Slurpee, though? Yeah, but no, but those don't really exist back in the day, man. Yeah, like, that was probably Slurpees, later. And, and Slurpees were only the 7-Eleven ones, so we'd actually have to go look and like, did they have that? I'm I'm assuming they did their fucking research that there was yeah. strawberry Slurpees back <laughs> in the remember, day. What was the dog Slurpee thing with you know the oh hush puppy something yeah. like that, right? The hush puppies. hush puppies had yeah. multiple flavors, so yeah. maybe. Icy's always had like multiple flavors, yeah. and, but but I do have to give Hopper is a hundred percent correct. Half the time, those flavors all fucking taste the same. Pretty what much. Is, so. all sugar. Yeah. yeah, it's just <laughs> sugar and ice. Like, and it, it doesn't taste like any real fruit. It's all fake to begin with. So what's the point? But yeah, that's a good point. Cherry, strawberry. Yeah. They must have had some very good selection back then. Okay, so we didn't talk about one of the, the best things about this this series though or this season I should say how what did you guys think of Billy as the bad guy I thought Billy so at, in second season I thought Billy was a interesting character but also just kind of annoying like just that asshole brother he played his part well yeah. but I lost actually boys did, yeah like yeah yeah lost yeah, boys that's kid, exactly like, what he is too cool for school long hair uh, but yeah, I thought once, uh, once to bang uh, Mike's uh, mom. Yep. Right. Well, that was interesting too. At first, I didn't realize that was Mike's mom until they showed Mike, and I was like, "Oh wait, crap! That's Mike's mom." <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyways, I, I thought they developed Billy into a really strong character in the third season, and it was uh, interesting how he was toe to toe with Eleven because we haven't seen that before. You know, yeah. like he was able to match Eleven on the same level. And also mess with her while she's trying to use her powers and look for him. Yeah, uh, right. Maybe yeah. even I, I think she. I think he was stronger. Yeah. Right. Well, like, I mean, when, when you look at that, like Billy and the Mind Flayer, like you have to kind of put as. Um, yeah, Billy's just the host, right? Billy's, like Billy's just the host. He's the body, and because he's a recognizable character, they just went with it for the whole season. Yeah, but it was kind of cool to see him have that dual nature like he did really well uh i always think when he's in the sauna as one of the best ones where he's yeah that was a cool you scene. know it's you can tell that that was billy that the point like being like i'm i'm sorry like i did some really fucked up shit like i i did some really bad things and then just that switch flips yeah. and the mind flare takes over and he just breaks the glass and like pops the thing and like yeah again physically with Billy's augmented power, like is much stronger than, than 11 and a couple times gets the best of her, which no one has been able to do so far. Yeah. When Tyler brings up that scene where she's like tossing him around and he still gets up and fights back. So yeah. like yeah. he definitely uh, was a really strong character. 
made you a little afraid for Eleven because there's that one point where they first fight and he grabs her neck, almost kills her. Um, so that kind of, you know, sets him up as this pretty big villain. I think it's really interesting how they've built up this upside down world. Like they've made it more and more of a threat every single time. So yeah. at first it was just like a place that we get lost in. You know, there's a Demogorgon walking around. Second, they get these animals that now are causing problems. And then they've upped it again where they have people that are getting taken over. So it's a cool evolution of this villain that we've seen. Yeah, it's different every season, which is, like you said, it's it's cool. Like, uh, this, this is one of those shows that if not done right, it could have just died after season one. Totally. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. If they didn't play it, the cards right and making it so ominous, they don't tell us a ton every single season. They just tell us it's yeah. a threat. Yeah. Um, and you guys talked about it, that first scene where Billy gets dragged in, it's a little scary. I was like, dang, that is terrifying. And then they keep showing stuff like that like where the people are getting taken over by that animal and it grabs their face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that gave me the alien vibes. It was just creepy. So, so I always got the thing where, where you kind of don't know is that creature, the mind flare or is Billy the mind one? And it's kind of looks like the, it's two body, one mind across two bodies, right? Like it has to have a human host, but it or, has or like at some point, like a hundred bodies. Yeah. And at some right. point, like a hundred bodies where it can control. Yeah. But like you see that scene at the end where they're hitting it with fireworks and Billy feels the fireworks hitting that thing. Yeah. So it's like, okay, he's like, it's not just one thing. It is legitimately like a hive, a hive yeah. mind. When they showed it, when they're fighting the guys in the reporter, the two reporters, they're fighting those two and they hit one of the head. Yeah. Yeah. And they can, they're feeling the hits and they both kind of go down at the same time. And how nasty was that goo that they turn into? What is yeah, that like bones was... and meat and blood and stuff? Like, well, and I kind of like the fact that it, was, it, it was cool. oozes and, and goes into a, uh, a thing that builds the body. So like the yeah. body of the mind flayer is just a yeah. amalgamation of all these other people and rats and other animals. Like it's kind of like the thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like it, yeah. it brings up some really good uh, yeah. John Carpenter's the thing, you know, yeah. like, which they, I love how they bring up in the movie, but don't put the the thing together. You know, they they mention it with about new Coke and regular Coke is the two versions of the thing. Uh, like, why did they bring that up with the fact that the mind flare is legitimately a like body shifting <laughs> creature like the thing? Yeah, it makes it creepy though. You know, you see this thing turn into goo, and then it's turning into creatures and people yeah. and are these people like gone or are we going to be able to save them you know it gives I, you all i'm questions. pretty sure when you melt a person you're not going to be able to put them back yeah, together i'm just going to say right right I off think, the bat i think they're goners man yeah long-term lingering effects for sure yeah like even if you put it back together like how does how do you know like that this little bit of goo goes to to bill but that little bit of goo goes uh, back to the the crazy lady with the uh, from the farmhouse, you know, <laughs> like, mm, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're all, uh, they're all goo. And, and first of all, like Jake Busey got a fucking pair of scissors to the throat. Does he really want to get put back together before? Like, That's true. Plus the, the chems that they're eating, they're eating fertilizer and oh, chemicals yeah. and Ajax yeah, like, and stuff. Yeah. Like that can't be Which, good for your teeth. Okay. That, that's the one thing I didn't really understand is like, was that to to make it so they could become part of that body? Like, why were they doing that? Yeah, they never really explained that very well. They never explained why it was making them eat all those chemicals. It was like, oh, it they it needs them to have those, but like, why? Yeah, I maybe that breaks the body down, like you said. Like, I yeah, yeah. It was, it's fuel for that transformation, or and just like, like it might have just been like a signal to the audience that they were part of the mind flare. Yeah, right. it didn't, to me, it really didn't serve much other purpose than to be like, oh, that lady's eating, uh, what was it? Was she eating the Ajax? No, she's in the fertilizer. She's in the mm -hmm. fertilizer. And like, oh, look, she's turning into whatever the rats turn into. Yeah. It was just a way to move the story along. Yeah, for sure. So, so everybody was talking about season four. Yes. Yeah. So season so, four, what do you think is going to happen? Because like Eleven doesn't even have her powers, man. I, so yeah. I, I think it's going to have to be which here's where where I really would like because I think it goes back to 
you've created kind of a really powerful character in Eleven, right? Like, yeah. she's going toe-to-toe with the, the Mind Flayer. When Billy is, like, this unstoppable, super strong creature, she's, you know, lifting him off his feet, you know, pushing him, th- like, throwing shit through walls. Like, she lifts, like, she throws a car across the mall at one point, like, which was amazing watching her uh, yeah, that was awesome. hit, hit everything. Um, I, I really think that it's going to be hoppers in the upside down. Eleven maybe has a fraction of her powers. Like she'll get a little bit of it back to be able to figure out. She'll be able to like do the little eye band thing and, and find him in the upside down The bird box, the bird box. She'll go all bird box. And, uh, to be able to find him to be like, okay, here's where he is. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's so, go find him. And they're going to have to get the gang together to go, to go yeah. find him all the while that Russian Demogorgon is probably going to show up in Hawkins, but now they don't have a telekinetic friend that they can find it. So they're going to have yeah, to figure out a way to take it down without superpowers. Cause 11 and will and Jonathan and Joyce all moved away. Yeah, so What's they're gonna have that, to, man. They're gonna have to come back and like. Well, yeah, clearly. Um, well, so the next season's gonna take place at Christmas, right? Because yeah. when Mike is saying goodbye to Eleven, he's like, "Well, maybe you can come back at Thanksgiving or Christmas." Yeah, so it's gonna be like a winter thing, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. it'll it'll be yeah, it'll have to be winter based on he, he they kind of dropped the next season for it or whatever. Yeah. Um, which I'm really hoping for some gremlins like vibes and some analogies with it, which would be great. That would be cool. Um, but yeah, I really hope that we get to see Callie like eight, right. Coming back. Um, yeah. You know, with with 11, to... not ha- 11, not having powers. Maybe we get to see the other kids. I think that's an interesting point that right? I want to focus on a little bit. Cause I've always kind of thought, and I thought it the most watching this season, 11 needs some help. You know, she's got the kids, but she's the only person that can really go toe to toe with these things. And it's clear that they're becoming a, a strong threat. So yeah. if anything, I think season four is going to be building Eleven's team. Maybe we finally get to see who these other kids are, what went on to create Eleven, kind of focusing on her past and how she is going to fix the future and get rid of the upside down for good. Right. But yeah, maybe, you know, can we, can we find all, all 10 of the others? Cause so far we know of one other, like we know eight. Well, right? and like we well, might see some of the others turn to the dark side, right, so, and become Sith yeah, lords of the upside yeah. down. Uh, <laughs> um, interesting. I maybe, like maybe, it. maybe, maybe number two becomes uh, the <laughs> host for the Mind Flayer. Like, <laughs> number yeah, two. right. Number two, come to the upside down, and your powers will be fall. greater than you ever imagined. Yeah, oh, poor number two. <laughs> that kid never had a chance. Yeah, and they said, and, and Night Bodega brings up a point, like, in, in the thing, I think 8, Callie, is the one that says, he's like, well, not all of us had legit power. Some of us yeah. were just gifted in other ways. But still, like, that, I mean, she could create, like, illusions in people, and Eleven's telekinetic and has that weird little lojack, like, <laughs> psychic lojack on her. Um there, There's the whole idea that potentially the other ones could they could have additional ones that have different sorts of powers or um, other aspects of, you know, like skills that they could potentially use. Right. They'll have their own little umbrella Academy. Hey, hey. but if they bring in the kids from umbrella Academy in some type of giant Netflix cinematic universe, (laughs) just kidding. Um, So So, clearly, clearly like the Russians are going to be involved in this season. Um, The Russians, had tons of money tons of like look like highly skilled guards even though a couple kids and a fat drunk sheriff were able to overtake them do you think the u.s government finally gets involved in this no more people like, need to die like 11 can't like you said 11 can't take on <laughs> 11 can't take on uh the, the bad stuff from the upside down by herself but she also can't take on the russian government by herself either the commies, man. Yeah, they're Where's, commies. What's Ronald Reagan doing about this? Space Wars, Star <laughs> yeah. Wars. Like, tear down this wall. Yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. Um, we need to build a wall around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Right. Like, in 1980s, Donald Trump needs to show up and be like, <laughs> some rich guy, right? Some rich guy needs to be like, we need to just build a wall around Hawkins, seal this off, 
not let anything out. Oh, and you know uh, what? Hawkins is going to pay for that wall. And how did the Russians get in there and build all this stuff and nobody batted an eye? I mean, come on. That's a lot of equipment. That's a lot of money. Well, because everyone yeah. thought they were building a mall. Like it was hidden under the fact that they were, were building a mall. But first off, I want to know how the fuck they built an elevator that deep down. Like, right. All of this. Like no. to dig that big of a hole. It's a little questionable. Yeah, Where did all the dirt go? Right. Like, there, people are going to be like, well, they dig out a whole lot of the ground to make this mall. They put um, it on the upside down. I have to give uh, Taps fan a uh, a good shout out here because he did remind me because I didn't look it up. Uh, Paul Reiser's uh, Doctor Owens. Oh, that's oh, his yes. name. That's his name in I the thing. The doctor of Eleven's program, right? Well, he's the one that's kind of like takes over for Brenner, right? But he's okay. kind of like yeah. the we actually want to make shit right, like we fucked up royally. Yeah, he was like, the one who's gotta, trying to like close the. He's trying to close the gate and then yeah. like help Eleven like kind of get through her like power thing right yeah. like like he was he's right. the one that gave hopper like the fake birth yeah. certificate and documents for him to be like this yeah. is officially yeah. my kid and he's um, the one who gave hopper the the code to call uh the philadelphia public library or wherever it was yeah. to, to get the government involved yeah yeah true yeah. i'd yeah. really like to see helen hunt be in uh Stranger Things season Ooh. four to complete that mad about you reunion <laughs> that's probably just me you know, we we could maybe get Helen Hunt, or we could get uh, what's her name, uh, Ursula from Mad About You too. Uh, Phoebe from girl? no Phoebe from uh, Friends. Friends. Uh, what's her name? Oh yeah, she was in that. Um, yeah, her. Uh, yeah, her, Phoebe from Friends. Phoebe from Friends, twin sister Ursula is yep. in Mad About You, yep, right? I forgot so about that. She she should show up as well because that's a pretty good eighties. Yeah. I know I'm more 90s, but still it's like kind 90s. of an 80s. That's okay. Yeah, and I think Mad About You was 90s, so they may uh, not probably, be the Helen yeah. Hunt, Hunt direction. But no, but she's not doing anything. Yeah, Lisa else. Lisa Kudrow. Nicola Lisa, brought yes, it up. Thank here. You. Yeah, Lisa uh, Kudrow. Thank you. I was stalling because I couldn't remember her name. Yeah. Thank you, Nicola. Next year when we finally get the Tom Cruise uh thing for, for Stranger Things, like at what point do we get a cameo of like a major 80s star? It's like okay, so let's 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 go in a different direction real quick there. Like it's probably going to happen, right? Stranger Things is like this phenomenon. I feel like the world stopped kind of what they were doing on Thursday. And most of us watch Stranger Things. It's kind of become that stop in my tracks, like, like Avengers Endgame, right? Everyone just kind of pauses and like goes and watches the show. Well, maybe, and he was referencing this season. We talked about him earlier in the chat. What if, you know, and he's been doing a show recently. He's been doing Cobra Kai. So what if Ralph Macchio shows up in season four and he teaches the kids karate to yeah. fight the no. upside down? You know who I actually kind of think would be a really great addition to it, though? I, I know, Nate, you're dicking around with, with thing, but <laughs> I really want Bob's older brother to show up and it to be uh, um, Josh Brolin. Uh, I want would, Bob, Josh work. Brolin. To show up and to be like, yeah, I'm Bob's older brother. Yeah. Yeah. Throw, throw in that fucking it, Goonies extra thing. Yeah, exactly. It, but yeah, that would it be would work. Badass, like, actually. Or like yeah. Josh's finger. Who's going to be... So who's going to be the new police chief? Ooh. I feel like there needs to be a new police chief, too. Like, Josh Brolin could be the new police chief. Right, to have him show up. Yeah, right? I, you got to replace that position. I feel like there needs to be an 80 star in that role. You do, you do Brolin. I mean, you try to get like someone like, like Stallone, like, dude, come on, yeah, just show up to be big. the police chief, right? Could you, get, but, you could get the guy who played Biff in Back to the Future. Oh, he's not doing awesome. anything. He's kind yeah, of old, though. Yeah, he? he's kind of old and a little chunky still. Yeah. Like, you need someone that's at least like Hopper fit because he, he saw he was kind of like, he was fat. But like you could tell, like he could beat the living shit out of a lot of people. Like you about, could tell there was muscle ooh. under there. Um, Taft oh, like, brings up Keith yes. Sutherland. Yes, one hundred percent. Or one hundred percent. Pull up that like, Lost Boy shit. Bruce Campbell in there because it kind of feels like that Sam Ra- Raimi vibe. Raimi. Yeah. Bruce Raimi. Campbell would be great as that like awesome. the new mayor. I think. Like I would love him. Uh, that, as, like, he's a new politician mayor. kind of yes. guy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's got yeah. he's got that that I like, thing. But yeah, I like Kiefer, Kiefer is the Kiefer, the new, Kiefer uh, Taps, Like you, you called it on that one, dude. Kiefer Sutherland. Well, you um, got you got Winona Ryder. Can we fit Michael Keaton, Beetlejuice oh, in in here somewhere? Oh, oh yeah, he's probably too big. 
Yeah, I, I, he, you get me really excited. He, you got to figure out a way for him because he's also on the older side of things, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go, Mayor. I'm Mayor of Hawkins. Yeah, the, the new, new Hawkins Mayor. Um, How did that guy get in bed with the Russians? Like, <laughs> Keanu Reeves, yes, Taps fan. Oh. We need a John Wick, Baba Yaga in oh. this place. No, so the, the problem down. is. Everyone's gonna be like, if you put Keanu Reeves in it, everyone's gonna be like, oh, we could just John Wick the the ending and like yeah. kill everything. Like, I want like Bill and Ted. I want Ted. Bill and Ted. Ted oh, Bill and- as <laughs> we, who, <laughs> yeah, they go Ted, back in time like, in this new Bill and Ted's movie. I want Ted Theodore Logan. Yes, as governor of Hawkins. Like, whoa, uh, that's great. Nicola Reeves shows up with a dog, a yeah. demo dog, right? A, dem- a demo dog, yeah. Yes. Come here, boy. Yeah, like you can't have Reeves because everyone would be like, "Oh, he could just do it." Like you kind of like he's too big that you pull it out of it's thing. Like in. Carrie Elwes was a great addition because you knew everyone knows who he is. It has to be subtle for but sure. But you you see like, it, and you're like, "Oh, that's awesome that they brought him in," and then you still see him as the character that he's playing. Like you can't see Keanu Reeves as anybody no. but Keanu. No. That's true. I thought Sean Austin was a great addition because it was like, oh shit, Sean Austin. I haven't yeah. seen him anything in a while. He's a great character in the show. And then they killed him. Yeah. So we need we, a, maybe so, like can, Elijah can, Wood. Yeah, Elijah Wood Ooh. would be cool to have in as, as like a, a college kid or something. Like what he, was he, he doing looked, in the still, 80s? He still looks 12. Uh, dude, he was in Back to the Future 3. Oh yeah, that's like, right. true. Yeah, so he, he, he does have a Back to the Future credit at least to, to get it. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, so last thing I wanted to bring up because I know we're getting close to the hour here. Um, Billy's death. Rest in at, peace. Rest in peace, Billy. Like, did do you think that they should have given him more of a redemption? I know that Nate, you haven't really seen this, so this goes out to to Larry. Or did you like how he? Uh, do you like the way that they no, they had like, it go? Yeah, like he he kind of had his redeeming moment, right? He did what he could uh, to mm-hmm. to to pause the the monster or whatever like i don't know it was fine like and we got the redeeming like we got we got a little more uh we got a little more feels for for billy on that whole beach scene with 11 Mm -hmm. and stuff right like we saw him uh his parents fight he saw him going surfing with his mom and like it it, i think uh i I really like the way they handled billy all around even the death like billy i see and that's where i thought too like that whole scene of him kind of at the very end breaking the the control and basically fighting off that big ass monster by himself right right after he had the awesome thing of like slamming uh, yeah. Mike's head into the fucking pole I thought that was pretty cool um but yeah like his his turn in redemption I thought they did really really well and that he kind of stops being an asshole at that point and you're like oh I actually real like he still is actually a good guy underneath everything. Yeah. Hmm. There's a lot to talk about with this show. Yeah. So we, we didn't even really, we talked a little bit about Dustin. Uh, we didn't talk at, at all about uh, Eleven and Mike and their relationship. Um, there's the Bob flashback. Like there's a lot going on. Uh, the one, the one scene that I thought was really cool when Eleven was figuring out that uh, she lost her powers or was losing her powers. It's so when she was digging through that trash can and pulls out the can of new Coke. And then they flash over to this scene where yeah. she was crushing the can of Coke from season one. So this autographed photo of Millie Bobby Brown, which is part of our super mega Stranger Things prize back giveaway, is also a season three moment as well, which I thought was really cool. That that was actually kind of cool. I saw that and I was like, oh, 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 yes. that so Ooh, so that's our better. giveaway. <laughs> yes, that is awesome. Yeah. Um, no, I, I really do think they did well. And yeah, like I, I was thinking like, how are we going to talk about this show for an hour? Yeah. Um, well, and we were supposed first, to talk, and, we were supposed to talk Spider-Man Far From Home too, because yeah. that came out this week. Um, and I'm like, yeah, we'll just cram it all in. And then it's like, no, no that's probably we have a lot to dissect. Like, Man, we could really talk about this for a long time. We, we, we yeah. still have to talk about like the Steve. Yeah, we didn't talk um, at all about Steve other than for a second with him and Robin. Him, yeah, Stephen, Stephen Robin thing, and then the the revelation that he has, and then you're like, oh. wait, like, what's gonna so, happen with like Steve's whole whole thing? Like, we have some time. We we, we got to at least talk about that, Larry. Let, let's do that real fast. So, as much as I love Steve, Elizabeth, who is not in the chat but is texting me, um, 
points out that in in season one, when Eleven's in that black space, right? Like she goes in the water and stuff. Uh, there is somebody. I will hold my phone up. There's a Russian agent that is in the, at season one. So the Russians were around all the way back to season one. Yeah, she. They were using her to like the original thing. I think was for her to spy on the Russians. Yeah, and then she accidentally goes into like an alternate dimension. Yeah. Um, okay. Pretty cool. So yeah, Mine. so that but that's this, cool that they bring it full circle. Yeah, but the scoops ahoy thing, like that was awesome. Like the, the, yeah. all of the Steve stuff, right? Steve when uh, uh, like he sneaks the kids into the movies, and then Dustin shows up a little bit later, and Robin's like, "How many little kids are you friends with?" Like that whole chemistry between them was was awesome and was on point. It was so hilarious. Uh, right. Like you mentioned for a minute, like uh, she overheard Steve and Dustin like trying to figure out the the Russian code. And all of a sudden she just jumps right in and she takes over and she's just part of that little click now. Mm -hmm. um, it was so cool. I, we have to probably have to touch on the fact that uh, Steve kind of is like, Hey, like I'm kind of into you. And she's like, nah, I'm into chicks. Like that was kind of cool too. How they just kind of like subtly drop that in right. and move it, forward. Didn't, it, it didn't dwell on it. She just it, moved it, on. Forget that it, relationship. The, yeah. The yeah. way he, he looks at it, he's like, Oh, well the girl you like is like, is an awful choice and you should probably yeah. do better. Like immediately switches from like, Oh, I kind of like you to like, mm -hmm. all right, now we're, we're, I guess we're just best buddies. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm going to yeah. like, I'm going to give you shit for the, the girl that you said you liked. Like I, I did like how they did that. I kind of feel bad for Steve, but then again, like his whole, like <laughs> when they're talking and she brings up the whole, like, Oh, you were popular or whatever. And he's like, yeah, well look what it fucking got me kind of a thing. Yeah. He's like, I think I we saw some nothing. really, yeah, we like, saw some really cool development from Steve because he was kind of yeah. like a douchey guy that was so concerned about his looks and his popularity, and he kind of realizes that's not important, and it turns into a badass. He wins his first fight. You know, he probably gains a lot from that whole experience. So I think we're going to see a new Steve in season four. Yeah. I think so, well, I mean, too. he went from, like you said, a douchey guy in the first season that kind of didn't really do anything uh, to, to the babysitter. To the babysitter kind of badass savior for them, right? Like yeah. he's the one carrying the bat and beating the shit out of the demo dogs. Like yep. he had mm. that moment where he's he got his cool back, right? Like he was always always the cool kid. Always the cool kid. So important. Lost question. it, got it back, and now he's kind of realizing that doesn't mean anything. Shoot, no, Larry. well, like Dustin Dustin brings it up, right? Like he's like, This isn't high school anymore. Like when when he's trying to sell her on Tell him on, uh, hey, you you got a really cool girl over here, Robin. Why why are you looking elsewhere? Right? He's like, this isn't high school. It doesn't matter if she's in band. It does doesn't all that stuff doesn't matter. So yeah, I think I think okay. Steve's growing up. He's definitely not the guy from season one who broke up with Nancy. Um, but important question, right? So the, the the love triangle from season one was Steve, Jonathan, and Nancy. <laughs> Do you think Nancy made the right choice with Jonathan? Because I think I'm like I, I know this isn't like a team Edward <laughs> team. No, uh, it, it kind of is. Uh, well, they they didn't touch on it as much. Like maybe that comes back in season four too. Like I'm all about I like I'd be team Steve all the way. Jonathan's like a weird. Jonathan's a, a weirdo, weirdo, man. Jonathan is a weirdo and yeah. kind of has a weird face. Like yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. like he's the type of guy that you automatically like. He's the type of guy that when you find out is a serial yeah. killer, you go like, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, they didn't really give him a whole lot of chances to really like redeem himself in this season. Like he just looked like kind of the whiny boyfriend. He's that... the only character that really hasn't gone through any growth. Yeah. Right? He, yeah. He, he he did his growing in the first oh. season. He's a little and... less of a pervert than the guy who's hanging out in the woods taking pictures. But yeah. So he's, he grew in that first season and kind of got to his arc. And now he's kind of the adult. Like he's yeah. um he, he really, he's kind of had to step up to be the dad for that family because yeah. they don't have one. Well, but the, he, no, for all actually, the kids, because those yeah. kids' parents do not have well, any clue where they are at any point yeah, ever. True. <laughs> been on Jonathan, so he kind of has that thing. So he, like, out of well, all the characters, him and Nancy, I think, have showed the least amount of total growth. Yeah. And I think uh, it's... It, it's kind of sad, and I really hope, like, we saw a little bit of, of growth from Nancy in this one. Uh, I almost thought Nancy was going to die in the hospital. 
Like I, I, thought, I, I thought it was her time. I'm like, yeah. right. They, they don't really shy away from killing main characters. That's been established. I really thought it was Nancy's time. And I, I really wouldn't have been that sad. Like, no, I don't really know no, what same. really she brings to it outside of that. Um, uh, but yeah, like I, I really want season four to be <laughs> very Steve oriented. Cause I think he has the best. He's clearly like, part. there's like, we, like we said at the beginning, there's so many good characters, but like he's, He's top three, right? Everybody yeah. likes Eleven. Everybody likes Dustin. I think everybody likes Steve too, man. Like, I, I, I'd be hard pressed to find somebody who didn't say that Steve is one of their three favorite characters. Well, but, and the fact that you have him and you know Steve and Dustin as kind of this, yeah, the dynamic like, duo, brotherly thing where they, you know, they they are brothers based on on everything, right? Like the the way that they act. Yeah, 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 so yeah. With the lightsaber duel in the beginning and yeah like th they have this this relationship and oh. th their banter is amazing between them and then when you add the third robin and erica like i'm sorry i really like that that little like four set with erica him robin, oh, yeah, too. And, uh, uh, Justin. taylor in the chat called them the scoops troops <laughs> that's a yeah, great i don't know idea. if that's an original idea taylor Maybe. but i like it so going that, back that on the it's the scoop troop versus and bald eagle yeah. Going oh, back yeah. on the Nancy and Steve thing, what if Steve and Nancy become back together in season four? It's a full loop. So she realizes, ah, this guy's kind of lame. I want yeah. Steve. Yeah. yeah John, uh, or he John, moved away. Jonathan moved away. just moved away too. So door but, is open. Go, Steve, go. Yeah. But no, they need Steve to bring in all the chicks to the, uh, to the <laughs> move store. Yes. So, um, your internet's turned to garbage, Scott. Yeah, I think we might need to. Uh... Oh no! Okay, that might be well, the point to call. Wait, it. is Scott in the upside down? I am. Oh. Scott, we will save you. All right, guys. Well, Larry, chill. So, thank you guys for sticking with us for this super mega Stranger Things episode, and go check out our super mega Stranger Things prize bag giveaway. Uh, we have a bunch of cool Stranger Things stuff. Go to stsguys.fun. Uh, and get your entries. It's open for like another three weeks. Uh, we'll be announcing the winner live on the podcast here. I think it's July 26th. Uh, something like that. Uh, 27th. So it closes on the 26th. We'll be an announcing the winner live on the podcast Saturday night. Um, it's going to be awesome. Hopefully somebody uh, wins some really cool stuff. In order to do that, right, you got to go check us out on Instagram at SDS Guys. You got to go follow us on Twitter at SDS Guys. And you gotta go over to our favorite Facebook at the SDS Guys. And I am Larry from the SDS Guys. Chilling like a villain. And oh. you know, you know what else I love? I love listening to podcasts. And the only place I listen to podcasts now is the new app on iOS and Android called Podcoin. Wait, what is what Podcoin, is Podcoin you asked? Yeah. Hey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Podcoin is an app that pays you to listen to podcasts. Uh, if you enter code STS, guys, you're going to get some bonus credits. And every time you listen to p your favorite podcast, like the STS guys, like Talking Pops, like Pop Collectors Lights, like DC Figures and Collectibles, you're going to earn more credits that you can turn into real rewards, like Amazon gift cards, or you can even donate that to charity. Um, so, yeah, go check out all your favorite podcasts on Podcoin. It's the best. <laughs> Blood and gold. Yeah. It's um. the best. And if you guys want to collect your own Stranger Things pops, maybe not the ones that are in our giveaway because you oh. are going to get those in the giveaway if you participate. However, say, if you're you, we're going to be sending you some, you might need to go pick up a pack of some protectors. Yes. If you guys don't have enough pop protectors, you might want to go check out shumisore.com and save yourself 10, 10, 10% 10 by using code STSGUYS. And while you're there, you can pick up some other Stranger Things pops. They send everything in a pop protector. So check out shoemeastore.com. Use code STS, guys. Save yourself some cash. And just to be fair, when, when, yeah, Tian, uh, when you go on to uh, Shumi, there is not just pops. They have a bunch of like random like statues and shit. Yeah. Like Shumi store is amazing. Go check yeah. it out. They Get have, that uh, well, well, Nate and I were looking at what? They had like the Thanos SH figure arts uh, figure too. So yeah, they've got some figures. They got big pins. So if you're into yeah. if you're into collecting fig pins, which I know most of you are, because fig pin is awesome, uh, you can you can go over there and get your fig fig pin fix too, along yep. with all your pops and your figures and I don't know, you name it, Shumi's probably got it. Like Jeremy always likes to say, they've got great Funko Pop protectors too. So 
Comic Con's coming up here. I, Go I get yourself some Comic-Con. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I just me too. Pack the other day, so, and I got, my, I got my priority, <laughs> got my priority box over here, ready to pack into my suitcase for Comic Con next week. I'm ready. Thank you, Shumi. They won't ship it in some random big box like Amazon. They will right. throw it in a protective box. They'll make sure it gets to you safe. So Mint check them out. box guarantee. Shumistore.com. Code STS, guys. 10%. 10. 10. 10. So right. next week, next week, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Far From Home. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Does whatever a spider can. Yeah, yes. we, will be, uh, we will be going over a very spoilery filled spider-man episode so go watch it uh, and come back next week and we'll hear us talk about spider-man and spoil the living shit out of that movie shout out to jeremy he'll be back with us next week and he'll be giving us yeah shout out to the chat thank you all for being here and hanging out with us and all the interactions we love you all thank you so much yes all right guys so for episode 91 of the STS guys. I am Scott. Hey, hey, it's Larry. Hey guys, it's been Nate. Have a good night, everybody, and we will see you next week. Bye bye. See you in the upside down. <gasps> Gasp. <gasps>